Okay, hi everybody. Welcome, welcome. It's our end of the summer Zoom. Um, for those of you who have joined us for several of the others, we do this every summer, free classes for adults and coaches on a variety of topics. Um, and Garrett and I always finish the summer with ours, and here we are. And uh, we do this sort of as a teaser for our deep dive. So if you really are enjoying what you're hearing today, which by the way is a very high uh, level overview of, of how we teach skating skills as well as how to start blending that with six ways of the spine. If you're interested in this topic and wanna to dig deeper, we do a deep dive in the winter um, in March and April. So winter, spring um, each year. So we do this as a teaser for that. So this is our free class. And then the deep dive is four classes, usually on Tuesday nights like this, spread out across March and April. And we dive into each of these topics. We bring in guests. We're actually gonna have a guest um, with us hopefully in the spring who teaches a lot of skating skills. So um, just a heads up that if you really are enjoying today, we'd love to see you again. Um, and those cost $75 for the four if you buy them all together or $25 a class. Um, so yeah, let's hop to it. Um, we got a lot to cover. And again, this is a very large overview. Um, and we're gonna kind of switch back and forth between the slides and the videos. Um, so Garrett's got the videos on his screen and I've got the slides on mine. So we'll kind of be batting back and forth a little bit to give examples. Um, cool. Okay. Let's make sure my PowerPoint's gonna click through. All right, this is a basic outline. I will send this PowerPoint as a PDF to all of you along with the recording afterwards. Um, and today we are gonna cover uh, just in general why skating skills are important, which I'm sure many of you as coaches and skaters already know. Um, I teach myself a nine foundational free leg position. So we'll discuss those. Garrett's gonna go over power push lean, weight of the blade. Then we'll introduce um, six ways of the spine. Um, and we'll show a bunch of off-ice exercises and some of the cues for that. And then we'll show you some additional exercises. That's where for sure we are not doing like as in depth as we could. We're kind of showing you the overview of the six ways because it's like six ways is a huge, huge topic that can go on forever. Um, my name is Kate. I use she, her pronouns. Um, Garrett, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Garrett. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, we are both the co-executive directors of American Ice Theater, but I also direct the branch in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And I direct the branch a satellite in um, Boston. And uh, we are very passionate at AIT about education and um, contemporary skating performance. So just a little bit about us, just in case you don't know, I know I've seen a couple new faces on the Zoom. Um, we do a lot of, uh, as you can see, our mission is to do education, performance, and outreach through artistic skating. So that can envelop a lot of things like skating skills, six ways, but also improv that can envelop um, choreography and teaching tools around choreography. So we teach a lot of different things things around that. Um, we want to support coaches and we want to support skaters of all ages and backgrounds. We are an inclusive, as you can see our values, we are an inclusive organization. Um, we believe very much we are humans first, skaters second, and that everyone should be able to skate and know how to skate and know how to teach if they want. So we offer opportunities to do that. Um, we also engage in a lot of contemporary skating and performance around contemporary skating, which is very similar to contemporary and modern dance on ice. Um, and it is also a global artistic movement that's kind of growing. So if you're interested in that as well, you can follow us on Instagram. You can follow Contemporary Skating Alliance on Instagram. And there's a lot of additional organizations like Ice Dance International, Ice Theater of New York, uh, the next Ice Age that are in the US that do um, artistic type skating um, work as well. So highly recommend and support our um, fellow companies. Okay, so let's get to it. 
Um, why skating school, skating skills. Um, one of our number one mantras in AIT um, is learn the rules to break the rules. We love this mantra because we believe that as much as we're running around the ice doing very different things, making strange noises and heels and sliding and trying all the things, you gotta know the learn, you gotta know the rules first. And so much about skating is foundational skills and rules. So that's why we're taking the time today to kind of go through those, even though we also think everyone should break them. Um, so as you all know, because I think many of you are coaches, skating skills are going to build core strength and posture, which we will talk about um, today. Uh, it increases body awareness. So much um, of skating skills and teaching skaters how to skate is going to be around giving them the tools to feel sensations in their body of where things are engaged, where things are twisted, where our head is looking, like all of those sensations are, you need those in order to do movement on ice. And we can start that um, process of learning and body awareness in our uh, very basic skating skills. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about mindful skating um, today. It creates mindful skating when you bring that awareness to yourself. Uh, stability and edge control. Um, and I think uh, the, in terms of understanding pressure and weight on the blade, we're gonna have a good discussion and we, I even wanna open it up to discussion. Um, weight on the blade shifts a lot. So like we can tell you where you should be, but like so much of what Six Ways does is it's gonna shift things around. So thinking about kind of how that shift happens and how to respond to that shift, I think is a lot of what we should talk about today. Um, exploring power in the range of speed. So much of a regular competitive skating, you have to skate fast. That's like all they care about. So we can talk about how to gain speed, but I also think that there's something to be said for understanding how to skate slow <laughs> and how to have control and ability around your edges and how to stop and how to really have very little power. I think that those things can be equally as important as gaining power. So both the range is important. Um, and then improving spatial awareness on patterns, which we have to do, as you all know, through moves in the field and such, and grow skating vocabulary. So weight skating skills are really the basis of everything that we do, um, even before jumps and spins. It's really the basis. Garrett. So we're going to start talking first about alignment. And the most basic alignment is neutral spine. Um, and it is so important to understand this position, um, starting with uh, core strength and hip stability. So it includes engaging our abdominals, zipping our belly button um, in and up towards the lower back. Um, we can do this through um, standing at the wall, through planks, um, which we will show examples of uh, in a bit. Um, and then, did you want to keep going through, Kate, next uh, Well, I think that the picture here to the right is a really good example of the diverse types of bodies we're going to see when they come to us uh, as coaches. Or if you look in the mirror and you kind of notice that you may um, look like one of those, <laughs> one of those final positions. Um, and this is where mirrors can be a really useful tool and videos can be a useful tool. Notice how um, I put the picture side by side because the bottom one shows you where plank position, all those muscles are engaged and you're in one straight line. And then if you look at the first picture on the left of, of the, um, the male uh, standing perfectly aligned, he's in that same position. So when I teach skating skills um, lessons, uh, <laughs> to the frustration of all of my students, they're required to do two minute planks at the top of every single lesson. So if I see them four times a month, they're doing four two minute planks. And I don't think it's a waste of our ice time because I help them, it helps them of course, gain stability and strength, but it also gives them awareness of when they're in that position down there on that horizontal plank, it should be the same engagement of the core and the shoulder blades was when they're standing. So even a nine-year-old, I work with plenty of young ones, will look at me and be like, why do I have to do the plank? Well, if you can understand what it feels like and the sensations, again, going back to body awareness, the sensation of the tension in this core and the shoulder blades and the stacking of the head directly on top of the spine, or 
horizontally because you have to, so you don't fall on your face, then you can start to figure it out vertically when we're actually skating or standing. So, um, and if you can't build those muscles, you won't make the change. How many of us have students that we work with and we've told them to pull their shoulders back, we've told them to pull their core in and they never change it. It's because they don't have the strength to. So you, I'm, they may hate you, but my students end up loving me because after five years, they're really extremely strong. So I would highly recommend shifting your mentality around encouraging your students to gain the strength rather than just reminding them every lesson. <laughs> you can move on. Okay. Do you want me to, oh, did you want me to talk about the mind? No, we're gonna, we're gonna go with the video. So I think you have to stop your screen sharing. Okay. Oh yeah. Yes. All right. Okay, so we are going to talk more specifically about neutral spine. What is neutral spine, you may ask? So here is a picture of a lovely uh, skeleton, and you will see that uh, neutral spine is when there are the three natural curves of our spine. So we have the inward curve of our cervical spine at our neck, the outward curve of our thoracic spine, our middle spine, and the inward curve of our lumbar spine, our lower spine. So as our uh, spine has a natural curve, in itself, when we are standing in that alignment, we have our head, shoulders, and hips all stacked in alignment with one another. So as Kim was saying, this includes uh, chest open, shoulders down and back, um, slightly relaxed, and keeping the chin um, tucked in, facing front. And this position here is um, not only important in skating, but also in our daily life. As you will see, this is a picture of poor posture and the spine being in disalignment or um, misalignment, or however you say that. And um, as you will see, the um, lumbar spine, there is a lot of pressure on that lumbar spine when we do not support the hips into um, our natural alignment with the shoulders over the hips. If our hips are too far back, there is so much pressure on that lumbar spine, which can create a lot of issues later in life, which also ties into a lot of injuries we see with figure skating, particularly when uh, skaters don't understand just this natural alignment of the spine it can affect us much later into our careers and beyond. Um, so it is just so important that the basis of neutral spine is taught at the very beginning of when we skate. So here is a video of uh, just showing that alignment with the skater as, as Kate is moving through. She was tucking in the belly button of the, of the student um, having those shoulder blades down and back, chin tucked in. And doing that at the wall is a really great way to feel into that position because you can use the wall as a guide. And then here showing in plank just how exactly to keep a neutral spine in a plank position. And as we're in that push-up position, the plank, the palm should be directly over the shoulders. Again, zipping in that belly button and feeling those shoulder blades pressing down and back. A major part of neutral spine is pelvic tilting. So having that pelvic bone tilt forward, as you will see here, uh, this student now showing us what happens when we are not tucking in that tailbone and when we do. When the tailbone is not tucked in, I will pause it here, you will see how much those hips are pressed back. And this is where that compression of the lumbar spine we were talking about happens when we are overarching that lower back. And so in order to tuck in that tailbone, uh, I like to give a lot of cues to students, maybe uh, my younger students, I will say, imagine you had a tail that you were pulling down, um, you know, at the base of your sacrum, and that tail that you pull down can tuck in the hips. Or if you imagine your pelvic bone being a container of water, and if your hips are back, that container of water will tip out. But if you zip in the belly button, 
tip that tailbone forward, the hips come forward, then you keep that water container intact. And so giving some cues, some um, visual cues are really helpful as well. And then here are just some examples um, of some exercises in neutral spine. We have a lot, as you know, Kate said, this is just going to be a quick overview of some of these examples. Um, but here's one example of a neutral spine where starting in parallel, going into an arabesque position, and then doing a turned out side position with the free leg. And here is a 135 degree where uh, we're starting in a 90 degree angle with the arms up and then leaning back to a 135 and maintaining neutral spine in that position um, is really difficult because it's it's really engaging the core um, and quite a core workout as well. And so it's super um, helpful to practice neutral spine and also work on core or strength with that exercise. Okay, we're gonna head back to the <clears throat> uh, PowerPoint. The second bullet here says practice mindful skating. And I added this part here after the neutral spine discussion because it all starts with um, sort of being aware of all those cues. So Garrett just talked a lot about specific body parts, the lumbar spine, shoulder blades, the tailbone, all of those places in our body. And, and we need to use those cues when speaking with students or when we're working in our own body to be able to, to bring awareness to them. And I tell my skaters um, to use the mental checklist. And by being mindful and present while they're in the movement, they can fix it at any time. So it, it gives the skaters the freedom to be able to change and um, be aware of what needs to change it while they're skating. So if they're in the middle of a moves test and they lost balance on one of their back inside double threes, well, they can regain that if they have the tools to be able to regain that on the next lobe. Like it's something they can change and fix and we can empower them as coaches rather than making them wait to come back to the boards for us to tell them what they did wrong. I'd rather empower the skater so that they know what they can fix while it's happening. And that takes mental checklists, body awareness. They can use you as a, as a coach or video and mirrors um, in order to get that sensation and that self-feedback. So I really think that's an important part of how we should coach um, is giving the tools to the skater um, so that they can be present while they're skating. Okay, we're gonna move on now. <clears throat> So when um, we're going to start with nine free leg positions, I we had a discussion, Garrett and I, about whether or not we should start with the like weight on the blade and the push and all of that, or if we should start with the positions. And it kind of went back and forth um, for us because uh, in the end, yes, while well, you have to know how to push, you also have to know where you're going. So we're actually going to start with the part of where you're going, where your free leg is um, once it gets going. And then we're going to kind of go back and talk about how we're getting there and where our weight is on the blade when we do that. Um, I teach these um, nine positions sort of like ballet for many of you the, of, who have done ballet, they have very clear positions that sort of all of ballet grows from. Um, and so I think that uh, figure skating, uh, while we have many free leg positions, there are nine that are really there are eight, the ninth one is kind of used less, but there are nine that can be used and you can identify as being used consistently throughout skating. Uh, even if you end up doing an attitude or whatever from a stroking position, you still are using those nine sort of as the base of what you're doing in your skating skills. So that's why um, I start with this, but I want to be clear that I, um, I, was, I was actually watching a lot of videos of Jason Brown when I was preparing for this and, um, and he uses them, but then he's like all over the place because he's using his three dimensional movement, his core body movement, his free legs are everywhere. He's changing his weight on the blade constantly. So once you get to an advanced level, you're going to find that these nine positions have like exploded. But again, just starting with the nine to teach from a basic level of knowing where your free leg should be at any given point and how that shifts and changes your weight. So um, I, I teach sticky position first, 
and I have pictures for each one. I teach sticky as uh, two flexed feet. We talk a lot about flexing our skating foot when we bend into the ankle and pressure into the tongue of the boot. So toes, I talk to them about toes rising up to the top of the boot. And if they don't feel those toes rose, risen up, then they know they're not properly flexing. By flexing their skating foot, they're already shifting their weight to the middle of the blade so they can have a good push. And um, by having their other foot stuck to it, you can see I call it sticky because the other one is rise, raised up off the ice about two inches and it's stuck full leg on leg, full boot on boot, both feet are flexed. They have ultra stability to do the push from. So this is the first position that I teach. And believe it or not, um, many skaters have a difficult time just holding this position in a straight line and being able to use their core and be aware of where their neutral spine is and how their core stabilizes that. Next, I teach stroking position, which we know everyone knows this position. Um, but I teach it as it's the position that shows up everywhere. So this is a landing position from our skater here in the picture, um, but that's also a stroking position. It's a stroking position when we do the first push of a forward crossover. It's a stroking position when we do a first push of a chasse. It's a stroking position many times when we push into a three turn. Um, so the stroking position where the free leg, when it is behind the hip, it's extended, you feel the point of the toe, you have that turnout. Many of you know these cues because you probably skate them yourself. This stroking position shows up everywhere, whether or not it's on an edge or it's on a flat or whatever it's on, I call it a stroking position. So we of course stand at the boards, we learn that position. Then we talk about how to do it on different types of edges, whether it's a flat edge or outside or an inside or backwards. And if it feels different and how it shifts. Um, also, I just want to take a mental note here, pointed toe. I think um, I run across a lot of coaches, I think, that don't focus on this as, a, as an important part of teaching stroking position. But I've also found that if they, the, the student or the skater isn't working on that from the foundations of their skating, they have a difficult time later re, like learning how to point their toe. And oftentimes it has to be like, I have to remind them, even if they've gotten their senior moves and they learned at the beginning of their skating to not really point their toe or they weren't ever told it, it becomes um, a bad habit. So I think it's really important from the start to talk about pointing the toe. And again, just like flexing, talking about the toes to the top of the boot, I talk about how this heel slips up off the bottom of the boot when you properly point. So again, bringing that sensation and awareness to the sensation of what it feels like in the boot to properly point so that they can make the correction while they're skating. Next, I call it a tuck position. Many people call it an undercut. This is the second push of every crossover forward or backward. Um, I teach it as it's behind the opposite hip. So not so far underneath. Um, I teach it that you have to have free leg turned in. Now you may notice when you turn that free leg in and the toe in it, it really drops the hip. So we want to keep hips as even as possible. It will drop it a little bit. It's inevitable, but you want to keep those hips as even as possible and think of the rotation coming more from the knee and the toe, that internal rotation. Um, on the flip side of that, I actually, back to the stroking position, I teach that the, and the rotation comes primarily from the knee and the toe as well. You can see in this picture that her hip is slightly, it's lifted for sure. It's not really turned out. It's pretty square and it, the foot is directly behind her same hip there. So we're finding that you kind of want to think about a lifted but square hip and that the turnout's more actively coming from the knee and the foot. Same for that tuck position, that actively you're, you're thinking about the internal rotation from the knee and the foot so that you don't drop the hip too much, but it will, it will drop a little bit. Um, and that's where core body strength comes into play. If you have the strength of the core, then you can stabilize those hips, even if it drops a little bit or it lifts a little bit, you have the core strength. Spirit, am I going through all of these before the videos, right? Yeah. Okay. So my next one is the wide step push. Um, this is the first push of every backward crossover, although we use it in a lot of other ways as well. Um, and your weight is over obviously that inside foot um, or the inside foot of the inside of the circle. You're, I teach that you need to have that rip push go on to the diagonal rather than having your legs parallel so that you can have an easier 
transition from the wide step push to the cross. Um, and many times skaters, I think, push in the foot goes behind or too far to the side of their, their standing leg. And we want it to go slightly on the diagonal up front. I also teach that we're pointing that toe. So an understanding of how to point the toe, but not need to lift the foot off the ice. So your weight is like, it's really, really in your standing leg and the other foot is still pointed, but it doesn't have to be off the ice. And finally, this is a great place to talk about rip pushes where your weight is in the middle of the blade, which we will discuss later. Um, but listening to that rip every time they take that backward push. Um, next position I teach is, let's see if it pops up. It's not popping up. There we go. Toe to heel turned out. Um, as opposed to, as you can see for the next one, toe to heel turned in. So toe to heel turned out is above the other boot. The knee is turned out. So you can see, I, I tell them it's like the number four. You can see the letter, or excuse me, the number four in the shape of her legs. Um, and she should be engaging her on this foot, left glute to really keep that knee turned out. So if you take ballet, this is coupe. This is turned out coupe. Um, so we should be pointing the toe, again, actively thinking about pointing the toe, which in all of these positions, except for sticky, we've been pointed. And then thinking about engaging that glute to keep the, the knee open. And then at the same flip side, flip side of that coin, we got Toady Heel turned in. We got a good Jason Brown shot. He's doing this on a transition between, I think it's a back rocker into a forward counter. Um, and so you can see how he's parallel in his hip. His knee is parallel. His foot is above his other boot. I don't think he's actively pointing. I would like to see more of an active point from that foot, but you know, it's Jason, it's fine. Um, but I would tell a student, I would like to see that foot actively pointing through that position. And this is a transitional position that we use a lot. I like to point out also that for toe to heel turned out, I teach forward outside twizzles and backward inside twizzles in this position. And for toe to heel turned in, I teach forward inside twizzles and backward outside twizzles in this position. Okay, and finally, our final three Turned out front, we have the free leg directly in front of the hip. We have it turned out. This is again where stabilization of the core so we don't, don't drop that hip. You can imagine that left hip would really drop on her because it's turned out, but she has enough core strength to keep the hip lifted. And then again, turning out from the knee and the toe rather than turning out from the hip. Pointed toe. And then one of my, one of my rules with my skaters is whenever your free leg is in front, your weight shifts back. So this will be another part of kind of our interesting conversation about weight and weight on the blade, because obviously that's not always the rules around where our weight should be. But in order to keep the shoulders in alignment with the hips on a uh, turned out front position, we, we typically have to feel like we're shifting our weight a little bit back. Um, we have turned in front. We have another snapshot of Jason here. He's going into, uh, he like swung his free leg in front to go into, I think, a forward inside bracket here. And his, um, his foot is, as you can see, in parallel. Uh, and it's right in front of his hip. And it's straight. Well, I think it is. I don't know if that's because his pants look all puffy at his knee, but it, sh it should be straight. It should be pointed and directly in front of the hip in parallel. Um, and then our final one that I this is the one that I would say we don't use that much. It's kind of like the planet Pluto. Is it a planet? We don't really know. Fifth position, like we use it some. It's mostly on S-steps or Choctaws, as many people call them. They're mostly on S-steps. I actually screenshotted this from Annie, my student, doing an S-step, a forward inside to a backward outside. And um, fifth position, I teach it straight up like fifth in, in ballet, if you've taken it, where you're, um, it's the one other foot position that's flexed. And you feel that foot go behind. You're trying to reach it behind like fifth. Obviously, you can't ever quite get there because it's not really accessible. But we're aiming to get there. And we're flexing it. So there are only two positions that I teach in foundational skating skills that have flex feet. And that's sticky position and fifth position. Um, and again, fifth position is util usually utilized more on S-steps than anything else. All right. Are we moving on to videos or are we, yeah. Yeah, I'll get it ready. Okay.
Okay, so we have the flexion push as she turns that foot out, bends into the ankle, presses in the middle of the blade. She goes to her stroking position and then she brings her free leg into sticky. She is leaving her hips behind. Can you pause it here? Um, I will say, I would note to this skater, if we can reconnect our hips underneath of us, you can see the arch in that lower spine. Um, so she's leaving it behind every time, whereas I would like to see her reconnect on that sticky position and, and reconnect to the core, bring it back down again. Um, uh, I will say too, that I am fairly flexible. I know some skaters, our coaches teach that you have to be perfectly on top of shoulders on top of hips. Um, I, I do think it's important to know how to do that, but then actually many times I don't use it, um, later on. So I'll teach it as a basic, like we're going to stack those shoulders right on top of the hips to make sure that we, our core strength is ready to go. But once we move into like higher level, um, more advanced turns, more advanced skating, I think that it's more important that their back has good posture and it's okay if it's slightly in front of their ankle, um, as long as they're not releasing that lower back like she is in this video. You can keep going. So we have a good example here of a stroking position, moving again into sticky position, and she does reconnect her hips. You can see her hips are in alignment with her spine and she's pushing through the stroking. I don't allow my skaters to use their arms, um, which I think is fairly new for this skater because she's used to using her arms, but I call them accessories because they need to know how to use their core to skate. And then their arms can become choreography. Their arms can be part of the twist that they need, or their arms can be part of the movements they want for their choreography. Um, so I usually ask my skaters in foundational skating skill exercises, do not use their arms so they reconnect with their core. Um, and it's quite hard actually to balance like that. Um, we have additional sticky positions here. You can see how um, we're keeping the real flex feet. That's a, that's a good example on Garrett skates there. You can see how much he bends into his ankles. Um, <laughs> he's really utilizing those of the boot. Um, and then this is a good um, exercise. And this is the first time Karen's doing it where we, we use sticky and then we have to use a twist. Can you pause it right there for me? Um, we have to use a twist in order to find the stability of those hips. This is actually the very first exercise I give to any skater that is working on skating skills with me. Um, I, I try to get them to understand how to bring those feet together. We have the flexed feet. Both feet are flexed right now. We have the hips square, and then we're utilizing the core strength to stabilize through the twist. And then she has to do it on both sides, even though that's not in the video. And, and so much of the time, skaters will lose all stability in their hips while they move that upper body. So finding the ability to ground yourself into your skate, find the pressure in the ice and twist from the core is what this exercise is for. Oh, it does go to the other side. Ta-da. Okay, so you saw this picture on my turned out front position, and I have her doing some back cross strokes, again, with no arms, and she's feeling that turned out front. She's shifting her weight back each time. She's feeling a rip. She's moving the free leg back. She's using her core in order to not fall over, and she's keeping her hip lifted through that turned out front position. We also do it on inside edges. We have a stroke. We move toe to heel turned in to turned out front. So you can see all of those positions, toe stroke, toe to heel turned in, turned out front. She's moving through that toe to heel turned in. And each time her free leg comes in front, she shifts back again. Then we have this tuck position. It moves from the cross forward crossover. I call this a long hold because the skaters have to hold it uh, for that full circle. And see how her shoulders are slightly inside the circle, but she's using her core to balance and to stay still and strong. Okay, so those aren't all of the positions I discussed, but again, this is an overview and we had to pick and choose what we wanted to show for video. So um, those were just some of them. Are we ready to move on to the next slide here? Yeah. All right. So after we've talked about alignment and certain positions of our feet and our free legs, 
We will now dive into the discussion of power and how to get our maximum uh, pushes from our positions of the feet. And so at its most basic, um, we are going to first talk about a stroke, um, the most foundational skating movement there is, and the ingredients for power where we have the bend, the push, and the rise. And so as Kate talked about in the sticky position, we will have that double flexion, that uh, flexed foot inside the skating foot, increasing the pressure in the middle part of the blade. And from here, I like to think of this also as the load. We have to load in in order to you know, leave the dock, right? So we have our load, our moment where we fully um, flex into our, our feet. And this is where um, neutral spine is super important because in order to get that maximum amount of uh, the load, the double flex through the feet, we need to be in alignment, shoulders over hips, head over uh, shoulders, Everything needs to be in alignment here in order for us to be able to propel forward into that stroke. And so the next part is the push. And so I like to think of maximum contact with the ice. So how can I let my entire weight drop into the ice before I fully push into that stroke? And so again, as we've talked about mindful skating, this is very much, I believe, a mindful practice to sort of imagine how when we bend, we are sort of gathering that energy down through the channel of the body. And then when we push, we are releasing that energy through the bottom of the feet, through the bottom of the skate. And so making that maximum contact with the ice, I like to think of as that stepping stone to that push. And then the final part is the rise and, and creating that rhythmic action with the knee and the ankle and that gathering of the free leg. And so as we gather that free leg, we slightly lift that uh, free hip. And once we lift and gather everything through that neutral spine, I like to imagine, a, you know, like a string lifting up through the center of the body. We're ready then to repeat the process and go back to the bend, the sticky position, the double flex, and then repeat that whole process. And so, you know, this Definitely comes in handy as we, you know, think about stroking, crossovers, cross strokes. Um, but the same process occurs even in more advanced skating skills. It's just a lot more minute, a lot more um, the, the, the bend and the push and the rise happens, but it's not always as visible because of the quickness or the uh, fast moving feet. You can't always identify it, but it's definitely happening in all of our skating vocabulary. We also want to think about the lean of our edge and how our body then moves through space as we are on an edge and sustaining that power. And so one trick I like to think about is how we need to elongate the body before we lean into our circle. And one tool is to use the breath as we do that. And so as we inhale, elongating the body in that neutral spine, imagining that center of the body lengthening as we um, prepare for the push or as we push. And then as we go into the edge to establish that lean into the circle. And that's where things like lifting that free hip come in handy, checking into our circle, as we um, go through crossovers, swing rolls, cross strokes, the check of the shoulders against the opposite hip are super important. Um, but it is not always necessary to check depending on what kind of skating movement we are moving through. Yeah, and later we'll talk about side bends, part of six ways. And sometimes we side bend outside the circle and we use that as a choreographic choice. So we are sitting here with the sort of traditional skating skills that um, that many people teach and uh, leaning on the edges is crucial in order to create depth of edge, certainly looks nicer, but it's not always something that you have to choose. So um, I just wanna, again, so much of what we talk about in AIT is range and understanding that range, everything that you may have learned, maybe there's a curiosity around there's more or there's something different. And so we know that traditional skating skills, learning the rules here is important, 
but breaking them too can be important. So um, I just wanna, I wanna give that little spiel because usually leaning in means into the circle, but we can do it outside. Uh, next slide, yeah. Another important part of uh, gaining power is talking about the weight on the blade. And so again, as we talk about the most basic, um, really awareness of where we are in the blade. If we are doing a forward stroke, we wanna be on that middle back part of the blade. If we are doing a backward stroke, we wanna be on the middle front. Again, this is sort of the beginning tools that we use when we begin the process of learning these skating skills. And as we move through more advanced skills, uh, we will see that it can change in the videos. We will definitely um, show some videos where we'll talk about different parts of the blade that we will need to be on for different types of movements. Um, so talking about how the weight shifts when we do turn. So a forward turn, we have to move to the ball of the foot in order to create that momentum for the turn. When we're doing backward turns, we need to be more towards the back of the blade. And again, that down up down action of the ankle is super important that um, creates momentum, that creates power. And that is something that um, is so important to establish again in neutral spine as we're learning the foundations of alignment. And then finally, um, listening to your blade sounds. Um, that rip, that magical sound that we all love is that middle um, back part of the blade. But then, you know, hey, Kate and I love a good scratch as well. We, we are- love a scratch. <laughs> we are proponents for a good scratch. When, when intentional. <laughs> exactly, when it's purposeful. Um, and, you know, it's actually quite, um, interesting when you really identify how to do a proper scratch it's actually quite hard and takes some um real technique to be able to scratch we have um these drags in our uh six ways of the spine curriculum where uh, as we do a twist with our upper body the um back leg is doing a scratch where we press to the top of the toe pick and that actually takes a lot of strength to be able to do that and creates that scratching noise. And then also the skid. Um, usually we use skids to stop and maybe in choreography for uh, yeah, transition. And that is in that middle center of the blade. I often tell my skaters uh, to listen to their blade while they skate, again, as part of mindful skating. So that when they're in the middle again, maybe they back to those double threes, maybe they're doing the back inside double threes and then they hear a skid in the middle one of those threes. Oh, that noise just told them they need to shift further back to the blade for that back inside three. Um, so allowing them to have the tools while they're skating and be present, listening, looking, feeling, then they can choose to make those corrections themselves in the middle of whatever they are doing. Um, I have this little sidebar over here, Gare. Bring attention to the constant shifting of your weight throughout your skating vocabulary, body movement, and free leg positions. You did bring that up just now when you said, as we go into more advanced positioning, if things shift and they shift quickly. So um, I just want to bring awareness to everyone that while navigating the weight on the blade, that bullet point is very much the foundation of what we should teach. Now, when you work with more advanced skaters, you may shift that. Like when I tell a skater that have a turned out front position and their weight shifts back, I may say to them to do that on a backward cross stroke, like I did in the video with Amelia. Um, and so maybe not every skater is quite ready for that yet, depending on what level they are. But as they develop their skills and have more stability and control, I think it's good to start pushing the limits of where their weight shifts and how quickly it shifts and their awareness around where it's shifting. Are we doing some videos? Yeah. So as we um, talked about how to gain power here, oh, Kate's gonna be mad at me for having my arms up. Here we go. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Uh, moving through the stroking position, as I um, briefly just described in the slide about the bend, the push, and the rise, and noticing how we go through the sticky to the stroke, back to um, the sticky position, and 
that whole stroke um, moving down the ice goes uh, through each position, the bend, push, and the rise. As we move to this next exercise, we have the tuck position that we talked about, but here is a double tuck position. So you bend, you rise, you rebend. And this is just reinforcing that idea of feeling that maximum release of our weight down into the ice and how that feels as we move through. Here is that exercise again, but with a tuck position and a turned out position. So you do a double bend back, double bend, double tuck here, and then a turned out position, double bend. So inside edge, tuck behind, inside edge, double bend here, double bend there. Again, that is creating that awareness of a, where we need to be on the blade, how we need to release our weight into the ice. And I like it too, because it's a kind of a figure eight pattern. So you don't need a lot of ice to do it. And, um, you know, it kind of feels like figures back in the day, right? I never did them, but I imagine that's how it felt. <laughs> um, and as we talk about, again, weight of the blade, um, we again went to the basics of when you stroke forward, you should be on that back middle. But I think it's also super important to speak mindfully and, and present to your student how that feels. Because in order to identify when you get more advanced, all the different ways you should be on the blade, you really need to understand how it feels to be on what part of the blade. And so again, as we have th these basic strokes and neutral spine and working through the different positions of the feet, again, teaching awareness and how it feels to, for instance, as we're going backwards to be on the more front middle part of the blade. And here's a fun exercise I like to do because it is just a, a one foot um, in, a uh, standing still. And so it really helps the skater have that awareness, be able to understand what it feels like to balance on one foot, to continually navigate where you are on your blade as you try to stay balanced. And here's an example of thinking about the lean uh, of the body. And so as the stroke happens, we have that length and then that lean into the circle, a basic exercise here in neutral spine. And again, using the breath, inhale as we stroke, exhale as we lean, working through some of the positions that we talked about, that stroking position, and then the sticky position as we bring the feet back together. Here is that same exercise backwards with back strokes on back outside edges. Thinking about that lean of the body too and how that free hip is slightly lifted, how the upper body goes into a slight twist. Um, and as the upper body moves into the twist, keeping in that neutral spine, but first of all, finding the length before moving into that twist on that outside edge. Here are some exercises kind of incorporating all of them. And here is uh, slip behind to a power pull. And this exercise is one of those where the shift and weight of the blade is constantly changing. And so as I start on that forward middle part of the blade, as the power pull happens, you will notice that I shift to the back of the blade as I then bring the free leg back and around. And here's that double flex into that slip, that turned out position, as the power pull happens, moving to the back of the blade and then noticing I'll hear also the chuck of the body as that slip happens. So we're working through the lean of the edge, we're working through the shift of the weight of the body and we're working through the bending, the pushing and the rising of the skating foot. This is a really good example of weight shifting while it's happening while you're skating the exercise and having to respond to that, that the forward um, slip edge pull. Uh, and finally, um, I call this a Torvalandine step because I saw them do it and 
I love it. It's fun. And so <laughs> this exercise is also a really great uh, utilization of all the things we've been talking about, how uh, we are moving through a flexion to a push and also this bend push and rise happening here as I step to the inside edge, rising out of the skating foot, rebending as we cross and then doing the push. This is exactly the bend push rise formula that we talked about just in a much different exercise. Okay, moving through because we are gonna run out of time real fast. No, we're doing good, we're doing good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we're finally going to start talking about six ways. So um, we just covered this basic skating skills portion, and we're going to move into core body movement. And, uh, oh, I forgot that this has plugins. Okay, there we go. Um, so the six ways of the spine is uh, Americanized theater's trademarked uh, philosophy around the six directions of how the spine moves, and then the, the use of those on skating skills, as well as the blending of those to create three-dimensional movement. Three-dimensional movement being what um, you would want to see for that core body movement uh, feature in an IJS uh, level four step sequence, but also just to move your body freely and not feel restricted to that neutral spine all the time, which got to learn the rules to break the rules. But here we start breaking them slowly by having other positions that our spine can move. Um, I want to reiterate that when we teach at Americanized Theater events, we always teach six ways. And um, when we teach six ways of the spine, it is always with neutral spine as the home base. So we already spent a whole slide and videos on neutral spine, so we're not touching it here again, but I want to reiterate none of these body movements are going to be accessible to skaters if they don't have a strong sense of neutral spine first. Because neutral spine is where you have that stability. So now you have the strength to move your spine other ways without collapsing, falling over, losing your balance. So important that we start just everyone understands that neutral spine is the starter of all of these. We break down um, each position. And as you can see in these uh, dance positions, uh, we have a contraction. C-curve contraction is a tuck of the tailbone, drop and release of the head. Uh, you can see that, that uh, the, the man looks like a C in the shape of his body. Uh, we have the upper back extension. So we, it's not a release, like it's not a back bend, like a layback. It's an opening of the heart and the chest and the chin in alignment with the spine. It's not breaking the head and like just dropping it back, but lifting the spine in order to access the, the upper back lift. And the chin responds. We use this one frequently in skating. When we introduce ourselves, when somebody comes out um, to skate at a competition and, you know, hey, our next skater is, that is frequently us doing an upper back extension. Um, side bend right, side bend left, feeling uh, that you keep your head in line with your spine while it moves to the side. I tell skaters it looks like a candy cane. Rather than moving front or back, you stay in the hallway, in the skinny hallway, and you just move to the side. So accessing the head movement literally as it moves to the side and your eyes stay forward. However, you could blend that with a twist and it could go up and down, but that would be blending. So side bends by themselves, the head's just going to move directly to the side. And then twisting right and left. Of course, we use this one in skating all the time to access many, many, many types of turns, uh, as well as spins and things like that. Um, but it is a great spinal movement for choreography too. Um, and we should, when we think about twists, we should keep our hips square and twist from that middle upper back. You want to feel the twist occurring without needing to move the hip. And that takes core strength. Um, I think we have videos to show, or did right? Do we show yeah. the videos now? Yeah. Yeah. So we got some six ways videos for you guys. Swappity. All right. So just to uh, show in uh, through these videos how to move through the six ways. We'll start with the contraction, starting from neutral spine, releasing the chin into the chest, relaxing the upper back, and then. Bending the knee slightly and releasing up till um, you feel, feel completely relaxed in your upper back. 
And then rolling up to feel how we are releasing vertebrae by vertebrae that motion. Here is upper back extension. Again, finding neutral spine first. And then as we go into upper back, feeling that chest open, shoulder blades down and back, you'll notice here she is not tucking in the tailbone. And so she is, um, again, compressing the lower back. So reminding your student, if you see that, to tuck in that tailbone so you keep the shoulders over the hips and then lift and lengthen uh, to find that upper back extension. Seeing upper back extension. Oh, whoops, I didn't need that one. Um, here is upper back extension, uh, finding length, and then uh, opening the chest. Here is a side view, finding neutral spine, and then opening the chest, shoulder blades down and back, chin high. Also to note how it's important to move into these positions, especially as you're teaching them from neutral spine. As Kate said, that is the basis uh, position we always want to be in. And so from that position to move into the uh, prescribed position we're working on is super, super important. And then working through side bending. So again, from neutral spine, releasing the head, letting that head tilt down and keeping that belly button zipped in as we release all the way down, um, letting the uh, shoulders stay stacked over. So we don't wanna roll the shoulder forward. So again, using the wall for um, practice to really feel that alignment is a great tool to use. And then twisting, and again, using the wall, um, an important part of the twist is to keep those hips square. And so as you find neutral spine, keep the hips square, you want to lengthen and then turn from the navel and find that twist. So that back shoulder is rolled back. Uh, we feel those shoulders hugging towards the wall. And here at the wall, this is a great um, exercise. If you're on the ice, you can use the um, glass as a great uh, exercise to um, have your skater go against the glass to try the twist. Um, it's so important that those hips stay square as you're moving through this twist. And again, as we talked about with lean of the body, lengthening and then twisting. So with twisting, especially um, axial, extension to inhale and then exhale as you twist is um, an important thing to do to also keep the integrity of your spine and to find more um, movement through the spine using the breath as you go. Um, I wanna just note a couple things. Um, the breath for all six ways is helpful. That I was thinking when we were watching Elise do the upper back extensions, just understanding that when you inhale, it expands the chest and it opens the chest and that you can more naturally organically move just from that inhale. So using the breath for upper back extension or an exhale for the contraction, it organically collapses the, ch the chest and the lungs. So um, encouraging the skater. I remember when I was like 13 and I was training and my choreographer would be like, breathe. And I'd be like, that's stupid. But like, if we get the skaters at 10 thinking like I can breathe and skate and it's not dumb, I feel like we'll catch them early. And like, we can make sure they're learning that breath is a part of it. Um, and the other note I wanted to make too was, um, on the contractions, we had Susanna who was all in black and I was guiding her through the contraction. Oh no, Garrett was guiding her through the contraction. Um, typically we would want to tell the skater to not drop their head below their butt. Um, and less choreographically, that's something that we want them to do. But for the contraction, you're wanting to bend the ankles and the knees and you're wanting the hips and the tailbone to, um, contract, but you don't want to bend so far forward. So it's not about bending forwards. It's about the sensation of pulling your belly button to your spine and releasing your head. Um, so that's another kind of quick uh, fix for a lot of times when I have skaters who are really just doing flat backs, but they're going really far down on their flat back. And I'm like, wait a minute, 
So first of all, we're in a flat back. We're not even curving the spine. And second of all, we're accessing this low thing. That's really not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is that drawing in um, of the belly button and the release of the head. Again, maybe it would help to use that exhale. So and just to um, add on to that mm -hmm. real quick is that especially if you're releasing too much forward, if you try that on the ice, you would probably fall forward because of that. So much of your weight is then moving forward. So um, again, talking about the balance point and our shifting of our weight, especially when you do a contraction, that shift of the weight is so different because your body in it is in such a different alignment than neutral spine. And so um, it, it just makes it all the more important that when you learn the contraction to not go so far forward so that you can really feel into that alignment and not tipping so far forward for your safety too. <laughs> um, I actually think this is a good pause point for maybe some questions slash discussion um, because we're about to move into just watching six ways exercises on some basic skating skills and then also on more advanced skating skills. And that's our final two parts of the, the Zoom tonight. Um, so maybe this is a good pause to be like, does anyone have any questions about what we've covered? Does anyone have any thoughts on this sort of continual discussion around weight of the blade and the shifting and the weight and all of that? Does anyone have thoughts about six ways or questions about six ways? I just wanna open the space up real quick before we move forward. We do have time uh, to do this. It's a quiet bunch. I know, I can jump in. I was thinking um, when you guys were showing the video and you were talking about exercises that engage the change of like the lean, the weight on your blade and your core, a really good one is the classic Michelle Kwan inside to outside transition spiral. If you ever tried to do that one, it's like you're using all the things that you guys described, like literally at the same time to maintain that position and seamlessly change that edge. So that's a fun one. And I'm sure there's probably plenty of examples of her doing it um, <laughs> to try that one too. Thanks, Elizabeth. Anybody else have questions, thoughts, exercises they'd like to share? Things that they uh, have found when they teach that may be even different than sort of the way we've taught. I wanna reiterate that um, Garen and I, we are, we're just coaches uh, like many of you and we're learning through experience and we're open to learning from you all just as much as uh, we're sharing sort of what we have learned ourselves. So um, if anybody has anything else to contribute, we welcome it. Uh, I kind of wanted to ask about when you were talking about the tuck position, like in, a, in the crossover was how you were talking about it, how you usually teach it as behind like your other hip instead of more like extended beyond. Like, I guess, why? Like, why do you teach it that way? <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple things, actually, I think Karen, is Karen still on this call? Oh no, she left. Um, I taught it to Karen. She's the one with the purple hair in some of the videos this week. And I did tell her that that is different than how I would teach it to learn to skate. So I do want to say here um, that many of the things in those nine positions I'm teaching already to skaters who are know their crossovers and know their basic three turns and their edges. When I teach it to a learn to skater, it's going to come from, um, it's going to come from just like lifting it up and getting it underneath. So that's going to feel a little bit more off of the hip. When I teach it to skaters who already know how to do crossovers, I do it for extension. I think that we get a nicer extension if we lift it behind versus thinking about pushing it under. And I think it looks nicer from a line perspective. This is a pure aesthetic thing and it's it's my own aesthetic. So um, by teaching it that way, I am not saying someone else is wrong. If you actually noticed in Garrett's, he did tuck positions and they were more underneath. Um, and his free leg is very extended. It's straight, it's pointed. Um, but I teach it just to give the skater more glute strength and to be able to lift it and have access to the behind and the rotational in versus depending on it going under, which oftentimes can drop the hip. And there's not a lot of like flexibility and choreography around that. Like if that's all they can do, I can't use that more than just that. But with choreography, when I do the tuck um, behind the opposite hip and it's more lifted, I can lift it really high. I can turn it in really deep. 
I can move it quickly to stroking position if I need to midair. So there's a lot more flexibility for me by having it just behind the opposite hip rather than tucked deep underneath. Did that answer your question? This is to say, there is no wrong. Everything you do is right when it comes to the undercut. Uh, however, that is what I find in choreography to be helpful, um, to have a little more flexibility around the free leg. Any other questions? That was a great one, Jillian, thank you. All right. Oh, Angel, you looked like you were about to go for that mute button. Yes, hi, sorry, I'm on my phone, so I have to like reach forward whenever I want to do anything. Um, Do you find um teaching uh, in specifically the, like the turn in and the turn out positions, do sorry, I've kind of a cold, so I might cough. <laughs> but do you find that kids struggle to identify like the sensation of turning out from the knee and the ankle versus with the hip? Because I feel like that would be like hard to separate. So do you have any like um, I don't know, like most common like fixes for that is my question, I guess. Yeah, I think it's a strength thing. It's an awareness of where when your hips are square and whether and like being able to utilize the hip when you need it. I am not saying I don't ever turn out from the hip. There are definitely times like in a spiral, if I need to access that hip turnout, that I'm going to use it. But just like we say in all things, we want range. So I want to be able to know that I have the strength to use the hip turnout versus not use it depending on what I need for balance on my blade. So um, I would say a really good exercise for that would be just do plank position and to lift the free leg up, maintaining the neutral strength, like in plank, um, the neutral spine strength and lift the free leg up and rotate it out and rotate it in and rotate it out and rotate it in while they're stabilizing core and plank position. By doing that, they're isolating the hip by itself. And then if you wanted to even go a step further, you could say, keep your hips square now in plank and just turn the foot out and see how that feels different and work the muscles that require the foot to turn out. So that would be a good starting point to bring awareness and strength to it. Really, it's a strength issue, Angel. So if they can't do it, it's because they don't have the strength to hold in one position yet. Um, sometimes I think it's a body positioning. Sometimes I will say there's skaters who just, their turnout is so lacking it's more parallel that even getting a stroking position to turn out is tough so sometimes i will be flexible with that rule in order to get them to get to where it needs to be turned out so it might be opening that hip a little more than i normally would with the skater who has the flexibility so this is also going to be malleable to the skater's bodies right um but all of it comes back to awareness and strength yeah additionally i would say a good exercise to do is just seated um, with the feet turned out in first position and doing flex and points. And that's a really simple, like, off ice warm up that oh, I, I remember doing in ballet. But um, in that first position, it naturally your hips are in, but you have to turn out from the knees and the toes. And so when you're, you know, engaging those muscles by flexing and pointing, you're just stabilizing or strengthening those muscles surrounding the hips the um hip joints and um working exactly that keeping those hips uh engaged and forward while turning out the knee and the toe and i find that a really helpful exercise too great questions y'all thanks uh so we will move on we just have the last two parts here. And where we start putting six ways on some basic skills, skating skills, and then six ways on more advanced skating skills. Um, so when looking at it from a basic position, sorry, basic skating skills, starting on two feet, really important. That's what we do in a lot of our six ways at seminars, just to be accessible to all levels um, for balancing control and understanding where your body is and how that weight is shifting every time you move your core. Um, and then moving into some basic skills, of course, three turns, he steps, crossovers, stroking, that kind of thing. You'll see some video examples. Um, bring, have your skaters bring attention to how it's shifting their weight. So like Garrett said before, when they drop forward and they do their first contraction of their whole life on their two feet and they see that it pushes them closer to their toe pick, bring awareness to how they can maintain more middle of the weight in the middle of the blade and still move their body. 
Um, so that, that discussion starts that awareness. And, and it becomes important when we're exploring lots of different, different um, core body movements that change constantly to be able to work with the weight on the blade and how that's gonna shift in response. Um, then finally, they can begin to blend and overlap the six ways movements. So you might just start by trying two together, a twist contraction or a twist side bend and see if you can just put two together on two feet and how that feels. Um, Garrett, I'm just gonna zip through this last slide here about a, the additional one and we can watch all of them together, okay? So then additional or more advanced um, exercises of the six ways. Uh, of course, now you're gonna put those onto more difficult steps or turns. Uh, the fun thing about this, y'all, is this is endless, infinite creativity. You get to choose anything and then add a six ways movement to it. It's so much fun. Every one of you could create 10 way different than what Garrett and I are gonna show you. Um, Developing a sense of three-dimensional body movement. So I shared that at the beginning, that that's something that is needed in a level four step sequence, um, but also just in general in choreography, it's becoming more and more uh, exposure around body movement and skating skills on many competitive skaters, as well as as an ice dance and ice shows, you see that three-dimensional movement happening on skating skills. So this is an important thing to learn. Um, and then uh, my final note here, I just really wanted to highlight it. Practice not judgment, curiosity, and compassion. It's funny because we used this when we talked about improv last year, and we had improv tools as our deep dive last year. And non-judgment, curiosity, and compassion is super important with improv. But y'all, it's important with skating skills too. Uh, creating a space where you feel that you can fall over and learn what that means from your weight shift, right? Uh, and curiosity around what new movements can you create and how your body feels when you do a contraction and compassion when your body may be like, heck no, not gonna happen. Not I'm too sore or my body doesn't bend that way. So these three things are super crucial, not just for improv, but for basic skating skills in six ways too. All right, one more group of videos. Well, two more. So we are gonna start with uh, the basics of six ways of the spine with our skating vocabulary, moving through our forward contractions. And like we talked about earlier, um, going too far forward is uh, not correct for our contraction. Um, here you will see the two in the front are going quite forward and pretty much in a flat back position. So you see their shoulders um, and hips are like basically in alignment. Um, the skater in the back, you will notice that that C curve is more present in the body tucking that chin into the chest and releasing that navel back into uh, the lower back and not going down so far. You're noticing that change in shape. We call the contraction a C-curve and that curve of the spine is what creates that contraction. So yeah, using uh, swizzles is, you know, the basic blocks of Combining six ways with skating vocabulary here is an example of an upper back extension with perimeter stroking. Here is an example of forward perimeter stroking with uh, an upper back extension to a contraction. So stroking, doing that upper back, then going into a tuck position, reaching arms forward in that contraction. Noticing too, just the possibilities with combining these six ways, as Kate talked about the possibilities are endless with combining our six ways with our skating vocab. Uh, here's another um, basic outside edge with a side bend lean and noticing how the skater starts a neutral spine on the stroke and then leans into that side bend, inhaling and then exhaling. And here's an example of the drag as we talked about the heel drags and finding a twist uh, swizzle into a heel drag, noticing how much flexion needs to happen. This is actually a great exercise to help your skater with their flexed position because you really have to flex in a drag in this heel drag um, in order to do it correctly. And moving a little more advanced now, here's some cross strokes, 
moving into side bends. So cross stroke, inhale, elongating, exhale, leaning into the curve with that outside edge. And then showing back cross strokes here with a twist position and a uh, variation of the free leg, a burnt, a, a burnt, a bent uh, turned out position. And um, noticing again how the skater starts in neutral spine and then opens into that twist. So as the skater strokes back behind, finding that neutral, then moving into the twist with the breath. Another example here of skating vocabulary with six ways back crossovers. So moving through contraction to an upper back extension, noticing how dynamic this looks with crossovers. We were taught to have the basic uh, upper back extension position, but moving through in this way can add a lot of variety and dynamics to your choreography. I want to point out that she's very far forward, probably a little more far forward than I would have on that contraction and her belly wasn't quite zipped in. However, I will say too, like we were saying before, once you get more advanced, you don't always have to have the shoulders on top of the hips. She's doing all of the six ways contraction, upper back extension way in front of her hips. Even her upper back extension is in front of her hips and um, that's okay. Like it's not the end of the world. It's totally fine that she's not completely stacked. However, I will say, right there at the bottom of the contraction she's not finding some lumbar spine zip the belly in like she needed to contract a little bit more through that but I just I like want to point out to everyone that like so much of what we're taught is to be perfectly upright and while we need to learn that rule when we first start skating most of the time I break it now <laughs> as long as I have good neutral spine <laughs> yeah, we talk about intention so Depending on your intention, any of these positions are valuable and and can be used. Even what we you know deem as a skating culture maybe incorrect or, or quote unquote ugly um, can actually be maybe exactly what we want in a program. And you know, in the competitive spaces, that might not always be the place to do it. But especially in your own exploration and contemporary skating, there are spaces to explore all the options. And so now moving to uh, some more advanced, um, we, I'm just gonna pause it real quick. We um, want to also talk about how energy, um, using energy with space, um, three-dimensional movement can um, inform the way we move through uh, our skating vocabulary. And so with this particular position, uh, these skaters are doing a toss motion. And so with this toss, they are uh, quickly swinging their arms down and up, and that moves them through a side bend into a contraction on that inside three. So I'll just start that over so you can see the full thing. Push, cross, swing, side bend, contraction. And so here they move through a side bend. And as you can see too, it's really hard releasing the head in that contraction. So it's a learning curve and something that, you know, these skaters are developing to fully release the head in that contraction. And it's also, I find many skaters are afraid to fully release their head when they're doing a contraction, especially doing it with three turns or moving fast across the ice. So again, identifying correct alignment, working with the skater. And again, as we talked about having compassion and being like, yeah, that can be scary. And, you know, how can I support you and helping it feel better? Maybe it's less speed. Maybe it's breaking it down again, you know, working with your student in a way where you meet them where they're at. Um, Here's a very advanced. Uh, oh, I didn't know oh, if I was going to talk about Here. this one. It's okay. Oh, um, sure. So yeah, okay. this is going to be a very advanced by one by Jacqueline. She actually created this one. Um, so we have a swing to a side bend through the fan kick. Notice how she really releases her head before that S step. And then she releases her head through that tuck position. So we swing side bend, S step, 
outside C-step cross release contraction. Now she is going pretty low on that release contraction. Her head went below her butt. And I would say she chose to do that probably. Um, and so again, range, uh, understanding that a C-curve should not always have the head below the butt. So you have understanding of what releasing your head means and then being able to do it if you want, like Jacqueline just did. <laughs> And then as we um, talk about, you know, we've talked a lot about skating turns. Um, here are more skating vocabulary um, in this sequence. Uh, the skater is doing a uh, upper back extension into a reverse bower, contraction, counter, back pivot, upper back extension, stroke position to a reverse bower, contraction into a counter. Um, and here again is another um, six ways exercise using uh, more transitional skating vocabulary. Here are squat spreads into a tabletop position. So the skater is moving into a side bend, a squat spread on an outside edge, inside C step to a squat spread contraction, and then uh, finding tabletop on a back inside edge, the neutral spine. Um, can you pause it? Yeah. So uh, something that I do with my skaters, um, as Jillian knows, because she started them too, is I do something called Kate moves. And this is something that I do post once they've reached their gold skating moves, or, uh, moves in the field, skating skills, whatever we're supposed to call them now. Um, so uh, once they've graduated from the U.S. figure skating's skating skills, turns out they don't know a lot of different things yet still. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we learn more things uh, like squat spreads, reverse bowers, contractions on different turns, uh, doing skid stops into turns. So um, Kate moves move have about five to six different patterns for every turn. So we move through levels of turns, starting with three turns and then moving into C steps brackets and and there's eight different turns that we go through. So um, we have full patterns for all of those. And we just showed a couple of these here at the end because it really is sort of the, um, I would say the climax of everything we've been talking about between skating skills, weight of the blade, understanding leg positions and adding six ways of the spine. Um, Kate Moves really does it all and sort of combines it all into kind of fun little choreographic sequences similar to what moves in the field are. Um, and that's oftentimes really exciting for kids because A, they like to learn new choreography. B, they get to learn new types of skating skills that they often aren't taught in um, their regular programs or in um, moves in the field. And then C, it reminds them, let's let's be honest, once they get to senior moves, usually they forgot what the freaking bracket, bracket was back in intermediate. So it reminds them what the actual turns are, how to use them together, how to blend them for clusters, things that are useful in step sequences. So I just put three up here. Um, you can play it. Thank you, Garrett. Um, and this first one uses that toss energy that we talked about. She is tossing through, uh, it's really a flat back with the chin down. So you can see she goes toss and release. It's a flat back. And we call that a tabletop position where her free leg is hip height and she bends into her skating knee. This one starts with the tabletop, moves through her twizzle. We learned that reverse bower out of the twizzle. And then we learned what a fuete was. So that in and out fan kick here, moving into her twizzle. We're in neutral spine through most of this. There's that reverse bower. We learned the change edge to a back twizzle into a tabletop spiral. And then a fan kick to a tabletop spiral edge change back twizzle. And then a contraction squat spread through a twizzle contraction squat spread. So we're using new vocabulary terms, mixing them with six ways and the turns that they already know. This is in the three turns um, moves. I call them some sustained edge. They start that first back outside three turn with a very deep contraction. Y'all, it is scary and hard to release the head there and then turn out and lift it up. That's quite hard. And it's a really good exercise to uh, think about weight of the blade. 
Um, and then this is a brackets one that I do. I call them snake brackets because we work on releasing our body through a snake contraction there. It releases from upper back to contraction. Uh, we do different types of brackets and then we learn these little snake two foot glides she's about to do. She goes snake, snake, and then another body snake contraction. And then we learned lunges and a bracket on the lunge there into a bracket back pivot contraction. So this full pattern uh, bracket move that I have. And then this is actually also a six ways move that we frequently use in advanced, more intermediate um, six ways where we do drop three contractions, feeling that nice release of the core and contraction through the back outside edge after the inside three. Feels real good. Use breath. That's a good juicy one right there. All right, y'all, that finishes us up. I will switch to my last couple screens here just to finish us out. And let's see here. We appreciate you being here with us today and listening to some of these things. Some key takeaways, everything comes down to core strength and ankle bend, develop body awareness for self-feedback. So that, that mindful skating is really important. Practice six ways of the sign separately first on two feet, and then uh, you can move into more advanced. Play with blending those six ways together and then use non-judgment, curiosity, and compassion. If you come away with anything, please do that when you're learning skating or teaching skating. <laughs> um, this is some of uh, the opportunities we offer. Just so you know, again, we have that deep dive series. It will cover this in a much more in depth. We'll go through a lot more uh, uh, skating skills with um, a guest. We will do uh, more six ways cues for all of the positions. Um, and we will do more, we'll show more exercises and um, of the Kate moves that I have and sort of uh, discussing how to blend those into choreography too. So uh, we also recommend if you're nearby any of our satellites, you can see we do have seasonal seminars. We'd love to see you there. And you can follow us on Instagram. And yeah, that's us. I would like to say that even though we um, share pretty openly, uh, Six Ways of the Spine is our trademark philosophy. If you teach it at all or you mention it, just please mention American Ice Theater. We really appreciate that because it is, it is ours and we own that trademark. Um, so if you go around and you do an, a class and you remember this and you're like, oh, let's talk about Six Ways. I, we, we understand we're not going to be able to keep you from doing that, but we, have, we appreciate you at least giving us the credit for that work. Um, otherwise, uh, does anyone have any questions or comments? Where do we sign up to take our Kate moves tests? <laughs> I love I've it. I actually had like seven people ask me that in the last three months, <laughs> which is really I want, funny. I want to get my Kate moves added to my jacket. That's what, that's what Jillian said, essentially. So Jillian and Joanna are taking it. Um, yeah, I, I I think I may at some point have them videoed and do some sort of thing, but that's going to take a while because I'm still kind of working through them, but they're the really possibilities are endless. Yeah. The possibilities <laughs> are endless. That's right. Um, but anybody who wants to come skate with me in Boston, we'll do some Kate moves together. <laughs> Kate moves. I'm here for it. We are working on a certification course for six ways. It's been a long time coming. We will, Hopefully within the year, get it finished. Um, We've been saying that for three years, but it will be finished. It's really my fault. He's saying this because it's my fault. It's Disney not lives. Um, <laughs> but if this really interests you um, more, uh, of course, our deep dive will explore six ways as well. But this um, certification course will be a real deep dive. It'll be a six week course. It won't be too, too long, um, but you will really learn the the foundational skills to be able to teach it to your students or if you're a skater and you just want that awareness you of course are welcome to take it as well so you will of course hear about it first from from us when um that comes out Jeannie, i think has a question oh my name is janae um i have a quick question do they have any seminars for beginner skaters so actually, we have an adult weekend skate away coming up in Austin, Texas, and that's for all levels. Um, otherwise, all of our seminars that we have at um, satellite locations are for free skate one and above, meaning essentially if you can just do forward crossovers, backward crossovers, and returns, 
and some steps, so basic skating skills. Um, otherwise, the Adult Weekend Skate Away is the one for, that is open for all levels. Oh, are there any um, seminars in New York? In New York, uh, yes. Uh, yes, there is a satellite there. Um, they don't work on skating skills. They work more on Six Ways of the Spine and improv. Many of our seminars are more based around contemporary skating, choreography, improv, and that kind of thing. But again, it's that is going to be, those seminars are free skate one and above. So forward crossovers, backward crossovers. Um, just for okay. safety reasons, again, because so much of the weight of the blade is shifting when we're moving our bodies so much. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today, Janae. Thank you. Anyone else have questions or comments? I just wanted to say thank you so much for this. I love um I love all of just coming back to any American Ice Theater stuff because it's so different from my rink. Oh my goodness, it's insane. My rink has been getting on my nerves so much lately. <laughs> Everybody can be so mean. So I just love coming back here. And that's all, but thank you so much. Thank you, Angel. Thank you everybody for joining us. And we'll stay on if anyone has any questions, uh, you can stay on with us. We're gonna turn the recording off and we appreciate you joining us tonight. We hope to see you for the deep dive on this next year. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you.